The PC37X gaming headset from Mastrop and Sennheiser brings you into the game with an open back design featuring angled drivers for pinpoint locational accuracy. Be heard clearly through the fold down noise canceling mic and enjoy the long lasting comfort of large plush velvet ear pads. Now available in an all matte black finish so the headset looks as good as it sounds. For more info, click the link in the description and catch the drop before it's gone. What's up guys? So we have the Craigslist PC here back in the studio. Uh, you guys probably remember me picking this up from a guy on Craigslist several months ago, hence the name Craigslist PC. I got very creative with it. And it's, it's back again because I want to do an upgrade video. I, this is actually a five-year-old system, or it was at least five years ago when the Craigslist dude put it together initially. And that's around the time when people start looking at serious upgrades for their rig. It's around the three to five year mark, depending of course, give or take, everyone's different, depending on your needs and how much horsepower you're looking for and things like that. What we're gonna be doing today is I'm gonna give myself a fixed budget uh, of anywhere between five and $600 uh, to spend on upgraded components that we'll be putting in to this build and hopefully breathing new life into this system. But let's quickly recap the specs of this old timer before we introduce the new components we'll be swapping in. Starting with the processor, we have the Intel Core i5-3570K, which is Ivy Bridge, it's a quad core, it's got four threads, no hyper-threading. It was a great CPU in its day, but now you can find it used on eBay for 20 to 50 bucks. So its glory days are definitely well behind it. That's being cooled with some variant of a Hyper 212 cooler from uh, Cooler Master, tried and true budget option. We also have a Z77 motherboard from MSI. The model number escapes me, Z77A G41 with 16 gigs of DDR3 memory. Not sure what the speed is. We have three of the same kind of memory module and then we have one Outcast that's a completely different brand, um, but 16 gigs right there. And then our graphics card is also MSI. It's a Radeon HD 7850. Two gig frame buffer it was a great card in its day, just like the processor, uh, but now it's definitely starting to show signs of age. Our power supply is a TR2 600 watt unit from Thermaltake. Not sure exactly how reliable this unit is or if it's even 80 plus certified. It doesn't look like there's any badge there. It doesn't mean that it's not, but uh, I can't really be sure. And then for storage, we have a 120 gig 850 Evo SSD from Samsung, which is what we're booting off of, and this mechanical hard drive, which I cannot see the label from where I'm at, so I don't know the, the capacity or brand. But uh, those are the two drives in the system. And then of course we have the case, which is the Corsair 200R. Like I said, this is a pretty decent system, and five years ago, it was a very capable machine, but alas, here in 2018, it's time for a change. So I was looking at this rig, trying to decide what can I keep, what's gonna last me still a few, a few more years, and what absolutely needs to go. And the first thing I thought, in terms of upgrades, was the CPU. So I'm gonna be swapping out that 3570K, for a Ryzen 5 1600. Now some of you are probably like, why first gen Ryzen, Kyle? You should get the second gen Ryzen, it's newer, it's better and faster. Yes, okay, that's true. But the Ryzen 5 1600 is still a fantastic six core 12 thread chip. It's really not that far behind the 2600X by any means. And you can find it for 20 to $35 cheaper than the 2600X depending on where you look. So since we're dealing with a confined budget, I'm going with the 1600 baby and it's gonna be loads better than the 3570K in pretty much every way. Obviously, we can't pop a Ryzen chip into a Z77 board though, that would end poorly for everyone involved. Uh, so I'm bringing along the B350M Pro VH Plus motherboard from MSI. This is a very bare bones motherboard. It's actually one of the cheapest available on the market with this particular chipset. Uh, however, it is also kind of two bare bones. It only has two DIMM slots. Uh, I would have really opted for the, uh, for I think it was an ASRock board that had four slots, but about the same price. The reason being is because these are all products that I already had on our shelf. If I actually planned this video ahead of time, like a smart person, then that would have allotted me more time for things like shipping and, uh, and I'd be able to whittle down the price while getting some components that made a little bit more sense for this build. If you'd like to see the alternate list of, of hardware that I was thinking, you can find the PC part picker list or link in the description below, uh, where we actually brought the, the total cost of all the upgraded parts down to about $500. What you're seeing today right here is closer to 600. So bear that in mind. Hope that's not too confusing. Obviously we need memory. DDR3 is just not going to work on this platform. So we have a 16 gigabyte kit, two by eight gig sticks of G-Skill Ripjaws 5 DDR4 at 2400 speed. Obviously Ryzen would prefer faster memory as always, but again, we're on a budget and there's nothing stopping us really from, from, from overclocking this shit. Hopefully we can get 2933. That would be 
my goal. Anything beyond that would just be the cherry on top. I should also mention that even though this is a bare bones motherboard with only two crappy dim slots, it does have an eight pin EPS connector on it. It is B350, we can still overclock our CPU. So that's, that's nice at least. Uh, and then finally, our graphics card will be replacing the Radeon HD 7850 for this lovely EVGA GTX 1050 Ti four gigabyte model. So we're essentially doubling the frame buffer. That's gonna be fantastic for so many things. Uh, and this is just a great card through and through when it comes to 1080p gaming at high or even very high settings, depending on uh, the title that you're playing, your mileage may vary. 75 watt TDP gets all of its power straight from the PCIe slot on the motherboard. Uh, so that's one less cable that we have to connect that's, that's actually plugged in right here. So overall, this is what our upgrade path looks like today, folks. I'm excited to get things underway. You can find links to all this stuff in the video description. Right now, I'm going to start gutting this guy to make room for all of this awesome hardware. See what I did there. And then we can circle back, do a little happy dance. We'll do some AB comparison testing just to see how much faster this new and improved rig is compared to old grandpa here. It should be nothing short of glorious. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, cue montage. Alright, upgrades complete. This is the finished product. It actually looks really nice. It turned out much cleaner than I thought it would, uh, and I guess that's kudos to the 200R for having some pretty decent cable management for a cheaper case, you know, with uh, plenty of room behind the motherboard tray and tie-down points and things like that. Obviously no power supply shroud, so I did have to stash some excess cables from our non-podular non non power supply uh, in the hard drive cage. You can kind of see there's, looks like a ketchup and mustard monster took a shit down there, uh, but it's somewhat out of sight, out of mind for the most part, uh, looks very clean. I also re uh, relocated the, the SSD, which was initially in this slot right here. And I didn't like this position because it was, uh, the SSD was facing in such a way where the ports were uh, right here on the inside of the case. And you could clearly see the SATA cable, the nasty ketchup and mustard SATA cable going to it. So I repositioned that behind the motherboard tray. It's kind of just floating there, but not really because it's, it's, it's tight and snug. So it's not moving around. Uh, no cables will come unplugged or anything. So I just put it back there because it looks cleaner uh, when you can't see it. Everything else was pretty straightforward. There's not too much to comment on. It was a really easy going uh, little upgrade. So I think now we're ready for benchmarks and uh, I'm actually using the same data that was pulled from the original Craigslist PC when I tested it initially two months ago or something like that. Uh, I didn't rerun any tests on that. I'm just using the same data there. So that's gonna be compared to the data that I pulled today using this new and improved PC. Uh, just so that we're all on the same page there. If you guys recall, I did not overclock the original Craigslist PC when I tested it, and I tried to do that same thing with this rig, but I, I couldn't help myself. I overclocked the memory just a little bit, simply because the Ryzen platform is so dependent on memory speeds, whereas the Intel platform is certainly not uh, when it comes to gaming anyway. So I, I just couldn't help myself. I took it from 2400 to 2933, which isn't even a huge bump, but I think it's gonna make a, a few percentage points of difference at the very best uh, in today's testing. So if you guys wanna get super mad about that and give me a bunch of hell, go ahead and tell me what a terrible person I am in the comments, I don't care. But with that all behind us, let's take a look at the numbers for our brand spanking new 2018 upgraded PC and the five-year-old outdated version of itself that came before it.
fast now. My goodness, it's blazing. It's like hashtag 420 blazing it right now. Uh, but honestly, what would you expect? We literally took out parts that were around five years old and swapped them out for mostly current gen hardware. Obviously, the performance gaps there are going to be pretty substantial, as we clearly saw in the benchmarks. So that's super exciting. I think this this was five to six hundred dollars well spent. But at the same time, uh, th this could have gone many different ways. And so I kind of want to ask you guys here at the end of the video, how would you have spent that five to six hundred dollars differently if you were upgrading the same system? I'm very curious to hear your thoughts. I'm sure you have a lot of opinions about it, as you often do. So leave them down there in the comments and I'll get around to reading them and stuff. Um, but that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna like scrap this or like this is a very functional, usable system. Maybe I'll donate it or give it to someone who needs one. I don't know. I don't know yet, but it's a, it's a great system now. I mean, it was a great system for its time before. Now it's a great system today. So mission friggin' accomplished. I feel proud of myself. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Go ahead and toss a like on it if you enjoyed it, and get subscribed to the channel for more tech stuff coming at you really soon. You can also check me out on Floatplane if you want to watch my videos a full week early without ads for three bucks a month. I'll put a link for that in the video description. Till next time, guys, thank you so much for tuning into this one. Have yourselves a good one, and I'll see y'all in the next video.